domain and range of inverse functions. In this video, I'm going to talk about inverse functions. And as we know that not all the time inverse function exists. If a function f is one to one function, then the inverse function exists. Now in order to show that a function is one to one, then the horizontal line test can be used. If the inverse function exists, then the domain of the inverse of f is same as the range of the function f. Then range of the inverse function f is same as the domain of function f. In case the inverse function does not exist, then the domain of the function can be restricted so that make it becomes one to one function such that the inverse function exists. Now the following examples will show you how to find inverse functions and how to find the domain and range of this inverse functions. Now in this example, the function g is defined by loan x minus 1 plus 3 where x is greater than 2. Explain with reason why the inverse function of g exists. Now before answering the question, first we try to sketch the graph for this function. So we can use the transformation method that we learned before where first we carry out the x transformation where we shift the whole curve to the right hand side for one unit in order to get the graph for ln x minus 1 after this based on the graph ln x minus 1 now we try to shift the whole curve going up for 3 units So, based on the graph, x minus 1 after shifting 3 units, so this is the curve. Now, initially, the domain of this curve is x greater than 1. But because of the question already changed, the domain becomes x greater than 2. So, now we need to mark the part of the graph where x is greater than 2. So when x equal to 2, y is equal to 3, not included 3. So now this is the part of the graph that we are going to take. Okay, now we can answer the question. So first, we just need to draw the graph according to the domain which is given in the question means we only need to show the part of the graph where x is greater than 2 based on here so when x is 2 y is 3 so this is the graph that we want to show okay then next is we know that if a function is one to one function then inverse function exists now how do we know that a function is one to one function so to do this we can use horizontal straight line test so under horizontal line test means any horizontal line that we draw across this uh, curve there is only one intersection point between the horizontal line and the curve if in this case so means this this uh, show that the function is one to one function so to do this we do not have to draw all the horizontal straight line we only need to draw a dotted horizontal line 
and label it as y equals k and where k is greater than 3. k is greater than 3 means the horizontal line that is greater than 3 for example when y it is equal to 4 when y it is equal to 5 when y it is equal to 10 so this all this line we can see there is under only one intersection point we don't draw the line where y it is equal to 1 so when y it is equal to 1 uh, that is not our domain in this graph so no intersection point here so means we need to write k is greater than 3 so since there is only one intersection point so we mark the intersection point then since there is only one intersection point now we can start explain with reason so since there is only one intersection point between gx and y equals k then this means that gx is one to one function so now because gx is one to one function therefore we can make conclusion that the inverse function for gx exists so we write the statement since gx is one to one function thus inverse function for gx exists Now we can find the inverse function of gx. To do this, we let y equals ln x minus 1 plus 3. So what we need to do is we need to rearrange the equation such that x becomes the subject. So first step, we shift 3. So the right hand side becomes y minus 3 then in order to find the x we need to shift the loan to the right hand side because loan is same as logarithm with the base e so when e is shifted to the right hand side becomes e to the power of y minus 3 then finally we shift 1 to the right hand side becomes x equals e power y minus 3 plus 1 so we rewrite back this one in inverse function form so inverse function form is e power x minus 3 plus 1 so generally this is the inverse function for gx However, this one is not the final answer because we know that inverse function is always depends on the original function. In case if there is any changes in the original function, this will give effects on the inverse function, especially domain and range. So means we need to confirm the domain and range of this inverse function so to do this we can use this formula where domain of inverse g is equal to range of g so from the diagram we know that the range of g is greater than 3 so means this domain of this inverse function g is greater than 3 then 
same as range of this inverse function we need to confirm with the equation where range of inverse is, is equal to the domain of the original function where from the graph we know that domain of g is greater than 2 so means the range of the inverse is also greater than 2 then after that now we can write the final answer for inverse function of g x then at the same time we can answer the domain and range of this inverse function so hence the inverse function for this g of x is equal to e power x plus minus 3 plus 1 and we need to mention the domain of the inverse where x is greater than 3 then after that answer the domain and range of the inverse where the domain of the inverse is the element x where x is greater than 3 and x is real number then the range of the inverse function g x is equal to y where y is greater than 2 and y is real number In this question, it is given that f of x is equal to e power 2x minus 3 for all real values of x. And then find the inverse function of f of x. Now, to do this, we let y equals e power 2x minus 3. In order to find the inverse function, we need to rearrange this equation such that x becomes the subject. So first, we shift negative 3 to the left hand side becomes y plus 3. So means e power 2x equals y plus 3. Then, in order to find the x, we need to put in loan on the left hand side and loan on the right hand side. Since loan is same as logarithm with base e, when logarithm with base e with the e power to x, so means finally will becomes 2x. Then on the right hand side, loan y plus 3 then after that shift the 2 to the right hand side becomes x is 1 over 2 ln y plus 3 so then we need to write rewrite the equation in the inverse function form which is inverse function of fx is 1 over 2 ln x plus 3 so generally this is the inverse function but however we need to confirm the domain of this inverse function based on the original function so to do this we try to use the formula where the domain of inverse of fx equals to range of f so in order to find the range of f, first we need to sketch the graph of f of x where this is the exponential function e power 2x minus 3. So minus 3 means we shift the exponential function going down for 3 units. So finally this is the curve for f of x. So based on this graph, we can see that the range of the function f is greater than negative 3 
So, based on this range of f, now we can write the final answer for the inverse function f of x. That is 1 over 2 ln x plus 3 where the domain of the function based on the original function is x greater than negative 3. Now in this question, it is given that the function g of x is equal to square root of x plus 2 plus 1 where x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Explain with reason why the inverse function exists. Now to do this, we need to show that the function is 1 to 1. So first, we need to draw the graph of this inverse function. So we can use the transformation method that we have learned where we shift the square root function to the left for 2 units and 1 unit upwards. So after the transformation, then we that is the curve. Then after that, we need to use horizontal line test to show that it is 1 to 1 function. So to do that, we draw the horizontal straight line and label it as y equals k, where k is greater than or equal to 1. So from the horizontal line, we show that the horizontal line has got one intersection point with the curve. So now we can write the statement saying that since there is only one intersection point between the function g of f and the line y equals k thus the function g of x is 1 to 1 function so since the function is 1 to 1 so that is the reason why the inverse function exists so now we write the statement since g of x is 1 to 1 then inverse function exists now we can find the inverse function of this g of x. So first we let y equals square root of x plus 2 plus 1. Then we need to rearrange this equation such that x becomes the subject. So to do this, we shift the 1 to the left hand side becomes y minus 1. So square root of x plus 2 equals y minus 1 then uh, when we take away the square root so it becomes x plus 2 equals y minus 1 power 2 then finally x is equal to y minus 1 square minus 2 then after that, we rewrite this one in the inverse function form. So that is inverse of g, it is equal to x minus 1 squared minus 2. So generally, this is the inverse function for this g, but this is not the final answer because we need to always confirm the domain of this inverse function based on the range of the original function. So to do this, we can use the formula where the domain of inverse g is the same as the range of g. So from the graph here, we can see that the range of g is greater than or equal to 1. So therefore, the domain of this inverse g is also equal to 
x is greater than 1. Same as the range of this inverse function of g. So range of inverse function of g it is same as the domain of g. So based on the diagram, we find that the domain of g is greater than negative 2. So therefore, the range of this inverse is greater than negative 2. So now we can answer the, the final answer that is the inverse function for gx is equal to x minus 1 squared minus 2 and we always need to mention the domain of this inverse which is x greater than or equal to 1 then after that we can answer the domain and range of a this inverse function so domain of this inverse function g is x where x is greater than or equal to 1 and x is real number and range of this inverse function of g is equal to y where y is greater than or equal to negative 2 where y is real number now in this question it is given that the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 and x is real number now determine whether the inverse function of f of x exists in order to find out whether the inverse function exists we need to know that whether this function f of x is one to one function so in order to find out this first we need to sketch the graph of this function f of x since this is quadratic function shifted to one unit upwards so this is the quadratic function now we can use the horizontal line test to see whether it is one to one function so to do this we first draw a dotted horizontal line and label it as y equals k where k is greater than or equal to one so from this horizontal line we see that there are two intersection points so we mark the intersection point since there are two intersection point means this will have we can make conclusion that this function f of x is not one to one so now we write the statement since there are more than one intersection point between the function f of x and the horizontal line y equals k thus the function f of x is not one to one function if the function is not one to one so means the inverse function does not exist so therefore we write the statement hence inverse function of f of x does not exist now after this if function f of x equals x power 2 plus 1 for x less than or equal to 0 find the inverse function of f of x so after we have found that the inverse function of f of x does not exist for all the real value of x now 
the domain of this function has been restricted to all the value of x which is less than or equal to 0. So after the domain has been restricted, so now the function f of x becomes 1 to 1 function. So therefore the inverse function exists for x less than or equal to 0. Now we try to find the inverse function. Let y equals x power 2 plus 1. So now we try to find the x. So now here we found that there are two value of x. One is positive, the other one is negative. But since the domain, the value of x, we have already restricted to less than 0, which is negative value. So therefore, this means that the function, we will take negative square of x minus 1. So inverse function for f that is negative square root of x minus 1. Then we always have to refer the domain of the inverse, refer back to the range of the original function. We know that range of the f is uh, greater than 1 included 1. So means the domain for this inverse function also that is greater than 1. So therefore, the final answer for inverse function f of x is negative square root of x minus 1 where the domain of this inverse is x greater than or equal to 1. Now we proceed to graphs of inverse functions. Now, in order to sketch the graphs of inverse function, there are two alternatives. First method, we try to find the inverse function. Then using the inverse function, we sketch the graph of this inverse function. After that, we mark the domain of this inverse function based on the range of the original function. Now, let's look at this example. The function f of x is defined as square root of 3 minus x. First, find the inverse function. So, in order to find inverse function, we try to let y equal square root of 3 minus x. Then, we try to rearrange the equation such that x becomes the subject. So, now we got x equals 3 minus y squared. So, we always refer the domain of the inverse Back to the range of the original function, so means the range of the function f is greater than zero. So therefore, the inverse function for f of x is three minus x squared, where the domain x is greater than or equal to zero. So then, after that, according to the question, hence sketch the graph of the inverse function. The word hence means we try to use the inverse function that we found to sketch the inverse, the graph of inverse function. So based on this inverse function, we found that that is a quadratic, negative quadratic. So the shape of this curve should be an N shape. But because the domain is already restricted to greater than zero. So means for the end shape, we only need to take the part of the graph which is greater than zero. So after that, this is the graph of this inverse function. Now we go to the second alternative. So in this method, we are able to sketch the graph of inverse function without finding the inverse function. So what we need to do is first we sketch the graph of f of x. Then using the graph of f of x. So now we do reflection of this graph by using the line y equals x as the line of re reflection. So after the reflection, the image of the reflection is considered as the graph of this inverse function. 
so let's see how it works so first let's say for example i we have a curve of a function fx so let's say the curve is an s shape going up so this is the shape of f of x then first we need to draw the line of reflection that is y equals x mm -hmm. y equals x is a straight line going up passes through origin and we use dotted line to represent the line of reflection now we label with y equals x then for the point where the curve intersect the line of reflection they remain the same then we simply choose a point from the curve and we draw a straight line from the curve across the line of reflection but make sure that the angle between the straight line and the line of reflection must be 90 degree and the distance from object to center compared with the distance from center to image must be the same then after that we continue the same process for the other point so we choose the other point we continue the same process now we can see roughly that is the shape of this mm -hmm. image so now we can join all this point now this is the image of this curve the function fx so now for the other part we continue the same process we draw the straight line then we roughly we can see the shape so we join all the point now as for this part also we repeat the same process we draw all the straight line then after that we can, we can see that the shape is there so after that we join all the point of the image with the straight line so after that that is the image of the reflection so the image of the reflection that is the graph of the inverse function f of x now we try this example so for example the graph below is the graph of the function f of x sketch the graph of the inverse function at the same axis so first what we need to do is we draw the line of reflection which is y equals x by using a dotted line then we start from the important point here that is when y it is equal to 1 when after reflection y will become x so x is 1 after reflection then make sure we can see that when we draw the a straight line from the object to image make sure the angle between the straight line and the reflection that is 90 degree and distance from object to center and center to image must be the same so after that we continue to other point we simply pick one point and we repeat the same process make sure the distance is the same so you are encouraged to use the ruler to make sure the distance is the same so now we can roughly see the shape here so now we what you need to do is you just join all this point so after that that is the image then the image is the graph of this inverse function now we look at this example this example is a little bit complicated but we still need to use the same process so first we try to draw the line of reflection so the line of reflection is y equals x and we use dotted line to represent the reflection line then we go to the critical point first the critical point here we can see that is 3 so when x 
equals 3 after reflection becomes y equals 3. So y equals 3 is the image of x equals 3. So when we draw a straight line from image to object, so make sure that there is a 90 degree here and the distance is the same from object to center, center to image. Then the second critical point is the y-intercept. So from the diagram, the y-intercept is roughly 1.7. So when y equals 1.7, after reflection, it becomes x 1.7. So this is the image of this y-intercept becomes x-intercept. And when we draw a straight line, we can see that the straight line must be 90 degree with the line of reflection and the distance from object to center, center to image is the same. Then now we have another important point that is the intersection between the curve and the line of reflection. So all the point which is on the line of reflection, that point is unchanged. Now for this part of the curve, we try to join from x up to y so after reflection becomes y to x goes through the important point here so now we join the y to x goes through the important point here so that is the first part of this curve now we go to the second part. So for the second part, we do the same thing. We simply pick a point and draw the straight line from the point. Then uh, make sure the line must be 90 degree to the line of reflection. Then the distance from object to center and center to image must be the same. So you are encouraged to use the ruler to make sure the distance is the same. Then we continue to other point and we repeat the same process. Make sure it is 90 degree and the distance must be the same. Okay, after that, we try to join the point with the curve. So when we join the point of image with the curve line then finally we got this image line so this image line is the graph of the inverse function Thanks for watching.